You guys all good. I'm going to say this. I apologize about the panelists not showing up. Um, I'm looking into the issue right now. However, in the short little time, we did find another panelist that is willing to tell how to, uh, maybe not so much con artist stuff, but like how to take commissions and handle your workflow and stuff of that sort. Um, I'll is that a, a con artist. So once again, I apologize for the mistake. Yeah, so it would, be, it would be con specific stuff. It would be more just working with commissions online. Um, what websites to you use for your queues, how to manage your queues, keep in touch with your commissioners, etc. Would that be something you guys would be into? Okay, cool. I don't think your microphones are on. They are not. Oops. None of them are on. What's the button to turn Falco them on? Knows things. Show me the on button. Oh, you can turn the switch off. Then all the switches are on. Yeah, all the switches are on, my dude. Do we actually have a computer hookup for the printer? No. Damn it. Hold up your your art No, it would be like showing off yeah. the websites that FC people use. I care. I'm a mess. Well, they're getting that set up. I am your standee. <laughs> uh, my name is Bryn the Fawn. Um, you may see me running around in one or two of our suits. Oh, no, it's all the way on. Okay. There we go. <laughs> and I'm Chewy. I don't know how to do art. I'm just here to help. Chewy's just here as a comic relief because I'm usually not good at talking in front of people. But um, I've been doing commissions online for about two years now. So I, I'd like to think I have at least a little bit of experience, even if my art is probably not as good as some of yours. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so I guess I'll start with the basics of how to set up a queue and how to get your name out there. Even though my name's not necessarily out there, there are some great ways to do it if you want to really um, push your art commissions. So um, I would recommend finding your way first. Find a way that works for you, that's good for organizing. I personally use Trello.com. That's one that many artists use. It's completely free, customizable. Uh, like a, you can either make it a public or private queue board. It's super, super nice. If any of you are on Fur Affinity, it's a very, very common platform. I'm sorry, what was that first Trello. Uh, it's T-R-E-L-L-O. Trello.com. It's completely free. It's a completely customizable queue board where you can um, you know, manage different types of commissions, manage different, uh, you know, have they, have they paid, have they not. You can do different little color icons to keep everything organized. So it's very, very nice. Um, that's one I see used most often. Otherwise, I see people use like Google Spreadsheets or um, Google Docs where you can preferably make it public because that is the best way to keep in touch with your commissioners and keep them in the loop is to have a public queue that anybody can see. Um, so like I said, I recommend Trello and then um, like an open Google Docs or an open spreadsheet. Um, I always recommend progress bars. Any kind of way to show progress um, along with sending work in progress photos, but that'll be a little bit later. But um, every artist that I know, any good artist I should say, <laughs> has just a little progress bar to show like, hey, I did the sketch. Hi, I did the line work, I did the coloring, shading, you can have it whatever you set to. But that's what I do is um, on Trello, you can create little um, boxes that you can tick off. And so for me, like I have a default one for, you know, oh, here's some sketches. Um, I, you know, I did the sketches, I did the lines. That's another good thing about Trello too, is you can actually add photos to your queue. So for example, um, you can tell your commissioners, check out this queue and I'll post work in progress photos on there. You can upload files there. Um, that is probably the best way as both the commissioner and the artist is to have those public queues. I don't know if you guys have had any 
anything. So you guys are on the commissioning end. Sometimes people try and buy fur suits from me, but I've never really set up a proper queue before, and I kind of just will take one at a time and do it, so I don't really have a queue, but yeah, Trello's really good. If you're really good with Microsoft Excel and know how to do it on Google Docs, that's a really good one, too, if you want to go with the old school approach with, like, minimal effort. Yeah, I know, I know some people, only a couple people do that, really, but... Oh, oh, yes. So um, that's the main one. And then there are a couple different ways that I've gotten my name out there to start doing commissions. Um, sorry, this is really haphazard. <laughs> but the, the main thing that I did is if you're willing to have time, I opened up for just a couple very quick free sketch slots. Um, I personally have the, the chance where I work at a call center where we have a lot of downtime between calls. <laughs> and so I'm lucky enough that I can just, in between calls, do a quick headshot, post it on places like Twitter for Affinity. Um, if you're on the furry side of Facebook, you can post it on Facebook, but you know, just do little free things like that. And then like one of the things I ask people to do is repost it on their page with a link back to me because that's a great way to help help it spread get your name back out there um, another one is to I guess just post a lot of your own personal art as well it never hurts to post your own personal art people like a lot of content coming in a steady stream if they see a continuous supply of stuff at a reasonable pace they're more inclined to follow you and follow what you're making because they know you're going to keep seeing content. Yep. Otherwise, if you like me where I don't post very often, but I, I share the files quite often, um, I have a terms of service, which I'll get to in a minute, but I have a terms of service that I ask people to, to read where I have a timeline saying that um, I will get your commissions done in two weeks. Otherwise, I will contact you prior if something comes up. So I have I have a timeline in my terms of service. Um, so if you're if you're like me where you're just you don't happen to post a lot, uh, that's another good way to show your commission is like I will do this in this time. Um, that's another good spot to go to from here. Uh, if you a, another good way to get like attention and followers, I'd say, is like gift art of uh, mm. people with a lot of followers. Yes. Like, it's literally just using the system to yeah. benefit yourself because it gets <laughs> all of them. They all see it. They come to you. It's really just playing the system, really. You're not wrong. Is the problem here? Well, that's how YouTube works. It's playing the system, so it works. And that's my only experience with networking. <laughs> doing gift art is another great way to do things. Um, and it gets you friends, and friends help friends. <laughs> I don't know how this works, I'm trying to help. <laughs> <laughs> Julie is not liable for anything that you do that causes issues. <laughs> but, yeah, then aside from a queue, another great thing to have, um, both as a an artist and then what's great for your commissioners, is having a basic terms of service by saying, you know, what you will draw, what you will not draw. Um, for example, I have a list of, like I am strictly a safer work artist, so I have in my terms of service, do not, I, I will not draw anything not safe for work. You know, don't, I can't do that. Don't come to me with that just because I'm not good at making things sexy. No. <laughs> That's just not my thing. But you can put in there what you're comfortable with. For example, like if you are comfortable drawing um, furry characters, human characters, Fantasy, no. Fantasy characters, you can put that there to show, like, even on, if you have, like, you know, on Fur Affinity, <laughs> on Fur Affinity, like, oh, I can do humans too, or something like that. It's good to just say what you can do, and then there's things that, like, boundaries you're not really willing to cross. Uh, and another good thing is, um, I have listed in there just, like, like, like refund and edit information where, like, um, if I haven't started your sketch yet, then you can do a refund. Um, but if I've started it, you know, I can only do so much back. But it's good to just think of 
what are you, what you're comfortable drawing and how you both want your payment, how you're going to handle things if somebody backs out on a commission or if somebody, um, you know, tries to pull the, you know, pull, like they first commission you and then they back out and they're like, oh, it was for my, for my, my dying grandma, my dying son, which is like the most common thing. My grandma had a persona. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, the usual good one I've seen for that is uh, if people back out last second, you still have it like lying. This, if even if colored, you can turn into a your, your character here and do an easy turnaround. Mm, yeah, that's another good one. I don't do any of those, but that's a that's a great one. Um, I'm trying to think of what else I have in my terms of service. <laughs> I might have to pull up my own terms of service. I mean, um, just, just actually reading it and showing them the layout of it would actually be a good idea, too. Yeah, let me, give me a hot minute. I wasn't prepared for this. <laughs> we were just told this when we were messing around in our jam. I was going to play Mario Kart. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't think I would have done good. Yeah. Um, and then it's a good thing to have your terms of service in a place that's easily accessible, so I know a lot of people have it posted as a thing on their Trello queue, where they literally just outline it on their Trello queue. Um, I personally have it on a DeviantArt journal where you can link directly to it, and um, anybody can read it from the link. Um, Don't just stop trying to eat the mic. <laughs> Be good. <laughs> no, I, <laughs> I got your town terms of service. I'm so sorry. <laughs> um, I'm just trying to think of what else I have in mind. Um, Today we're going to show you how to do magic tricks to take money from people. <laughs> don't do Please don't do that. <laughs> what? This is the con artist panel, isn't it? Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, you. <laughs> yes, um, questions are welcome at any time, by the way, because I'm, I'm, I'm half in this right now, because I know what you're doing. Uh, one thing that I do is making sure that all of your pages link to all your other pages. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah, like I, I make sure my Twitter's linked to my YouTube, my YouTube's linked to my Twitter, everything attached to Fur Affinity. I make sure that everyone can find everything wherever they find the app. Yeah, and that's uh, one of the biggest ways of networking. Yep, and keeping your username as similar as possible between sites because it's it's just easier to find everyone that way. Like, pick I'm, a good one because you're stuck with it forever then. Yeah, that's why like I'm I'm bring the fawn on literally everything. I'm Chewbacca's cousin on everything. I can't get away from it anymore. I'm too deep. Yeah, it just makes things easier for your commissioners when they're able to find you on multiple websites. So yeah, that's a great one. It makes it easy to link to everything. Um, oh, then as you're drawing, make sure to keep in contact with your commissioners. I cannot stress that enough. That's going to be the number one thing you want to do if people are commissioning you. Send work in progress photos. You know, ask them questions. Ask, like, show them that you're trying. Show them that you're working on it. The more you talk to them, the more likely they're going to commission you again because they have a good customers, like a service with you. The, the more you make them feel like they're at home, you're, you're a friend of theirs, and like you're doing everything in your power to make it look good, they're going to want to come back to you. Mm -hmm. Like I, I have very favorite artists that do stuff like that, and I definitely go back to them over and over because of their customer service. Yeah. For, you know, just pretend you're a business. Act professional when you're talking to people. Don't swear seen... at them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but literally pretend you are working the front desk at McDonald's or something, like working the front cashier, where you've gotta, <laughs> you've gotta be nice to everybody that comes through because they're paying you money. Even if they ask for soup, and you don't sell soup, you gotta just let them down easy. Use real, like, real English. Yes, please, don't use, don't use. Or whatever language you're using, not text abbreviations and right. you for why you Yes. Right, like the whole world can see it and is judging you. It's my friend. Yeah, like, write like you're writing to your boss. Don't write like a child. <laughs> you can do that on any other site. Just 
when you're talking to commissioners, be an adult, be professional. Speaking of someone that should be an adult, hey, Pat No. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> And the other thing is, don't be afraid to bring up problems to your commissioners. For example, I've gotten, um, even though it's in my terms of service not to give me one, don't give me shaded ref sheets. I get shaded ref sheets all the time without color picks, which is very hard as a digital artist because it's like, I can't guess what color your character is and I can't color pick very well. So don't be. Yeah. But don't be afraid to ask your commissioner, hey, I'm having trouble color picking this because it's shaded. Can you send me, you know, are you able to possibly send me um, either a color palette of colors that you're okay with, or are you okay with me just picking from the ref with the understanding that the colors might be slightly different shades because I'm picking off of a, you know, picking off of a shaded ref. Or no. be like local tech who has the exact color lettering system, you know, the actual code that's for the color. Mm, he yeah. had that saved, so he mm. made sure to give it to them. So they, they, there's no way they can mess it up. Yeah, truth. So there, there's multiple ways to go about it. Uh, you can pick the difficult way or the easy way. But yeah, don't, be, don't be afraid at all to bring up things like that to your commissioner, because then that's another thing of saying like, hey, I'm trying very hard to make sure that I get your character as accurate as possible. You know, let me help me help you and on the other end make sure you let them know if something's wrong as soon as possible the sooner you catch it the easier the fix is yes it's I like when I went through family problems this last fall I had to contact all my commissioners saying hey I'm gonna I hope you understand but I'm gonna have to take a you know like a week or two grievance because a family member pass away and I want to make sure that I'm there for my family and everybody that's needed but as soon as I knew what was go as soon as I knew what was going on I went and commissioned or I went to all my commissioners and told them because it's, you want to make sure that they know because people are very understanding Fox and Pepper are not <laughs> I can hear them right now through the wall <laughs> which thank you guys for coming to this instead of Fox and Pepper yeah, really. No. <laughs> I mean, so I get that you, can, like, you get the base still, but... Yeah. Um, another good thing to do is, if you're comfortable with it, do your character hears, because those are also... They get to see pretty much the final product. Yes. So, um, if you're not... Are any of you guys familiar? Not... Are any of you guys... Do any of you not know what your character here is? Thank you. I'm assuming you guys all know what a, a Yitch is. Okay, good. Cool. Like, Good question. I didn't know what they were when I started the fan. I'm like, what's a YCH? Right. I literally I went back to my deviant art and I remember I see I saw a journal okay. asking what are commissions. <laughs> <laughs> like twelve year old me is like, what are commissions? Like, you mean what? you can't just get art for free? <laughs> right? Well, cause so many people did. No, so many people did free art for me. Oh well, yeah, it's kind of baffling. But Literally all of my like art before I finally like had a job was all like raffle art, and I was surprisingly good at getting raffle art. <laughs> oh, that's, a, that's another great way to get your name out there. Oh yeah, raffles, raffles require people to follow you, yeah, and a good seventy percent of them stay. Yeah, some and of them they actually too lazy to unfollow you. Yeah, but some of them actually stay. But that's a great another great way to get your name out there if you really want to actually start doing art more professionally is raffles. People love free stuff. Yes. That You're is... your own best critic with it. I see professional artists that sell it for like fifty to sixty dollars, and I see people who are about the same level as them selling it for two hundred to three hundred dollars. It's really how much you value your hour. How fast can you get a piece mm -hmm. of art done, and how much do you value all that time together, equaling what it costs? Yeah. Uh, if it helps any, the way I did my pricing. Granted, I'm pretty cheap just because I do it as a side thing, but I took into account. Um, how long it takes me to do something, you know, how long does it take me to sketch, how long does it take me to line. Um, and I hope I do traditional and digital art, so my digital art is actually cheaper than my traditional art because I'm not using, um, yeah, I'm not using physical supplies that I have to go out and buy. And you're gonna, you're, you'll see that with a lot of other artists where traditional art is usually more because, you know, 
Um, it takes longer too. Yeah, because you can't just like copy paste, move stuff around. You have to actually redraw. You can't it. mess up that year six times. You kind of have to. <laughs> <laughs> but and then I also heavily took into account how much time I usually put into it. Um, I know some people go off of what the uh, minimum wage is in your area um, and kind of do their pricing off of that, but I just kind of have a, a flat price. So for example, a headshot for me is like, a digital headshot is like $2.50 for me, but it's because I can do the initial sketch at work and it only takes me, God, I think maybe 30 minutes to get one done. And I work in GIMP, which is a free, digital art program that, I mean, it, it's a decent one, but it's not the best. <laughs> Which, that's another thing that um, if you're a digital artist and you, or you're a traditional artist looking to transition into digital, look at free art programs. Uh, Credo's a really good one. Fire Alpaca. Fire Alpaca's really it's good. It's really easy. Uh, yeah. yeah. I think my favorite. Actually, uh, freezes up a lot on certain computers, so I wouldn't suggest it. Cause oh. like, I have it and it freezes up every time I try to use it. Fire Alpaca, um, same for me. I use Yeah, GIMP takes some work. I use it to just do my title cards for YouTube, and it sometimes takes a hot minute for things to work. Oh, my GIMP has worked fine. I'm on like a really bad HP. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it hurts. She's got, I work for the ISP, and my and her stepdad's a computer programmer, so if it's not working, it's probably really not working. Yeah, I, I used to be able to uh, get a hacked version of Paint Tool Sai, and I'll say that's probably my favorite program to use yeah. overall. The issue is they kind of cracked down on it, and mm -hmm. now even I haven't found a way to get around it. So that's kind Maybe of you should buy it. Yeah, I don't do hard enough for that. <laughs> Paint Tool Sai is a very good one, and then uh, <coughs> Clip Studio Paint. Yeah. I heard another very good one. What about that one that we all used as kids? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, no, the, the one that you do when you go to the computer lab and you be happy with the Oh, I must be. What was it? Kid Picks. Kid Picks. Yeah. Use that. What is that? <laughs> <laughs> Hold the phone. Kid Picks was a relic. Oh, Kid that Picks. Was great. Not Kid Picks. I <laughs> knew <laughs> <laughs> Kid Picks and I was like, no, it's P I X. <laughs> No, I thought the first part he said K-I-D, and I was like, pardon what? me? What? <laughs> <laughs> what kind of school did you go to? I don't know. Did we all just have that mandatory test or just because okay, yeah. And, and <laughs> in the by the way, if no you guys have absolutely around. any questions along, I don't know, I just go for it. it cause in the I don't computer lab, it was the game that everyone wanted to play, and you would like draw with little things. Uh, yeah, and it was yeah. yeah that, that is the thing, I remember yeah. it. K-I-D space P-I-X. I don't know. It's like old, I think like the 90s, early 2000s. Early 2000s. Yes. I yeah. never used that. I've what? never heard of it either. So I, it's, I it never was used amazing. It. I had a school did you go to? Yeah. You went to a random <laughs> private Catholic school. Oh, that's why. <laughs> that explains a lot. I'm so sorry. <laughs> yeah. That was weird. Today, today we've introduced a lot of young Christian children to the uh, web games of the childhood that they lost. Which real talk, there, there is a, if you, are, if you are a Catholic or a Christian derivative thereof, there is a Christian channel tomorrow morning instead of a Sunday service. I don't know what religion all y'all are, but cross-promotion. Um, did you guys have any questions right off the bat? Because I feel like now I'm just rambling. I'm <laughs> just thinking of things as they go. As far as pricing goes, if, if someone has to about pricing, Wisconsin has a, a website called WorkNet. Mm -hmm. where you can program, you can put in, you know, what your area is, what you're doing, and it'll show you the beginning, middle, and um, yeah. expert levels, which is, you know, you're not, depending on what you're doing, it might be harder to find your specific, but like for graphic art and mm -hmm. stuff like that, and that can give you an idea of what, what you're worth in that specific area. Yeah. Well, I mean, inevitably, the market will tell you. It's it's always a little bit easier to raise your prices once you have commissioners than... Once the train's rolling, it's harder to stop it than making the train too heavy to start. Yeah, and to be honest, I found a good amount of people like it when you start off a little bit cheaper and you work your way up because then people are like, oh, 
only two dollar headshots. You deserve I'll to take, be paid more. I literally had someone come up to me and they're like, "Yeah, I'll take six of these, please." I'm like, <laughs> and even then, like, I like, I whenever I like commission a badge, like I don't have that because it's something I always sell it, but I got a badge for this kind, and it was only twenty five dollars for a full body detailed picture. So I'm like. You deserve like a five dollar tip because that's like way too cheap. Mm -hmm. So tipping is a good way to like let them know like you're worth more and stuff too. I'm not the artist at all because I'm not so I'm just note taking. But because I always heard the opposite too is that the, if they see in anything that you're you know the cheapest of it, whatever, then they automatically assume that you suck and they'll go to you know a couple dollars more or whatever. I didn't know it worked the same way in art, and I have nothing art. With art, it's... It's supply and demand, so... But it's also just a matter of what website you're on, to be honest. I know that, like... I'm not gonna lie, people on DeviantArt are kind of cheap. Very. On, on, furries yeah. are very generous people in the art world. Yeah, no, furries are where the money's at. Yeah. <laughs> Literally, like, I've heard like people tell me yeah, no, if, you're, if, you're willing, to like, if you're willing to draw anything and you can make it with ears, you'll make it fine in the art world. But yeah, like you're you're gonna be able to, for example, I can make more money on Fur Affinity than I ever did on DeviantArt. To be honest, that's part of the reason why I left DeviantArt. It's not because of the community or anything like that, but it's because people on DeviantArt are kind of cheap. They used to have their own. own Currency, so. They still do. They still do. I thought that like Speaking died. of which, how to take money? I yep. say take money like you're actually stealing it, but find out what way you want people to pay you. I always recommend PayPal. I'm sure all of you guys have PayPal. At least you or at least have heard of it. Anyone who's over the age of 18, right? Can crack them down on that. Okay. Right, but it's not only the easiest way but it is one of to be honest one of a little bit of the safer ways um, just because you can have people go through the goods and services which means not only are you protected but they're protected as well um, the issue is sometimes this can be abused yeah i mean you're i mean it's gonna happen no matter what but um people people can't do chargebacks which is um, a big thing because I use PayPal for literally everything. Um, Same. Same. I am a big fan of the invoice feature that they have. Yeah. Yes. 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 Uh, I'm a first week maker, so having large sums of money just mm -hmm. go through PayPal is kind of scary to think about. So using invoices is actually really helpful. Yes. You have yes. Like, yes. A yes. copy and like protection. Yeah, I love the invoice feature as well as just the fact that when you get it, you can just push a single button and it does all the work for you. You don't have to go through log, like all the logins and all the dealing with like confirming everything. It just does it all real fast. So invoices are a very good tool. Yeah, and you can make, if you get to the point where, especially you or you with your maker, I'm assuming people do payment plans. It's really easy to do a payment plan yeah. and keep track of Because you can payments. portion off those invoices. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can do it really easily. It's just a little checkbox. Yes, it's that's so nice. That's the main reason I recommend PayPal. Yeah. And I, I mean, I don't use the invoice feature because it's like I don't need invoices on two dollar, on two dollar. Fees, so like on a two dollar headshot, it's probably. Right. Well, and that's another thing to keep in mind when you're setting your prices. Are there any fees attached to how you're taking your money? With PayPal, if you go through the goods and services, it's uh, what percentage? It's a, I think. It's one or two percent. Yeah, but they 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 will take some of your money. Yeah, but the issue is doing it through friends and family is not unlawful. Safe. It's not safe. It's not. A, it's straight up illegal. Yeah, it, it, the IRS would consider it illegal because you're paying for goods and service yeah. from someone that's not friends or family, really. Technically. Yeah. But. Don't, don't sure make, don't yeah. make Do the you know? IRS mad. It's worse than killing a person. No, yeah. so not. What if you're on? Oh, you can't. Yeah. And make sure they check no address when no address needed. Ah! Make sure they check no address. I'm advocating for mine. No, I gotcha. Make them check no address needed. If there's no address that's needed. Ah! I've never had anyone tell me to do that. Oh, that's a thing. Because they, they, they do another fee if you don't deliver it. Oh, really? There's something like that going around. I know that was a big thing. Yeah, I've never heard about that. So that's news to me. 
Um, did you guys have any other random questions right away? <laughs> Oh, it's just the, it's just the bottom of his uh, water bottle. No. <laughs> you got more. I'm sorry. After, after going to family, you're saying. Oh, check. Make sure that if it's, for example, digital art that you don't need to physically mail to an address, make sure they check no address needed, because there are some people that they have. They're like me. I have my actual billing address <laughs> on my PayPal, because that's where I have physical art sent, but. Um, if it's digital art, they can check no address needed because I think you'd have to look online, but there's something about where PayPal's kind of cracking down on people not sending things when they have a, um, when they have an address put in there. You'd have to double check, but I know that's a big thing that a lot of my artist friends are making a point about is making sure to check no address needed, if needed. Um, how long does this panel go till? I don't know. Six, I think. We have 15 minutes. Do you guys have any other questions right away? Because right now I'm rambling. Like, I'm surprised and, you're able to get this far. That's my whole life, man. <laughs> if I you have, like our ramblings, be sure to visit uh, We Gave Chewy and Mike tomorrow. Yeah. That will pretty much just be me and a uh, random cast and crew being funny. For an hour. <laughs> He's the funny one. Chewy, actually, I would check out Chewbacca's cousin. Um, YouTube, Twitter, and sometimes for a I haven't posted there in a long time. Well, now you can check them out at the dance competition tonight. Yeah, I will be dancing, not in this suit. I have, this is uh, my secondary character, Kylo. Um, yeah, I know, all of my characters are named after Star Wars characters. I didn't plan this. <laughs> Kylo. Yeah, I realized that. <laughs> but did you guys have any questions, comments? Star Wars thing, you said? Yeah. I appreciate you so much. Nothing worse. This individual named their character after a Homestuck character, so. Oh God, have, Lord have mercy on your soul. Apparently, like working on their recipe, like right now, it's supposed to look like a bad recolor. Oh, it's good morning. <laughs> I can't, I can't I'm trying to publicly shame them whenever I get a chance. <laughs> We'll make, we'll make sure to get you some main stage access so you can shame him. <laughs> so I guess I'll do I'll just come in during the Umiya Chewy of Mike and just be like, so that is right there. Listen, if, as long as you can figure out how to put it up there to show everybody, I'd be fine with you taking like a minute to show that off. <laughs> <laughs> but quick recap. So just to because I know this was a train wreck of a panel. <laughs> Make a public queue, make sure that it's visible to your commissioners or even anybody that wants the link because then people are able to not only watch the progress of their commissions but watch the progress and how fast you go on other people's commissions. Um, oh, taking payment. Decide if you want to take, I, how, when you want to take payment. That's the last thing I would say because I know some people will do payment um, they'll take payment up front before doing any work. Some people ask for 50% down and then 50% once the commission is completed and other people are okay with doing the commission and then receiving payment after delivering the commission. So um, whichever one you find works best for you or makes you more comfortable. The, the first and second one are the safest. Yeah, the third one you, I usually only do Make sure you have a big fat watermark that is, makes the care, the care, everything look ugly. Yeah, where your watermark, and also water, watermark everything. Yep. Make sure people can find you when they see this cute art that you just created. Like, make sure your or ad something. or something is there. But and don't put it right at the bottom corner <coughs> because they will just crop it out. Make sure it's somewhere like right along the character or something. But yeah, definitely. But um, yeah, then decide when, when and how you'll take payment, and keep in contact with them constantly. Send them work in progress shots. Kind of give them maybe a timeline of um, if you you know know exactly when you have free time to work on art. Give them a timeline of when they can expect certain work in progress photos. Um, ask them plenty of questions, and I guess delivery is just, if you do digital art, it's easy. If you do traditional art, 
If you're sending it via Telegram, make sure they get the compressed file because Telegram Telegram garbles actual final cuts. Yeah. That is something that a lot of commissioners yeah. don't yeah. realize when yeah. they see it because on a phone screen it doesn't look too bad, but yeah. it, they they well that's they why I, that's why I personally use um, file sharing websites like Dropbox, some people use OneDrive yeah. or Google Drive. Yeah, or email, email works really well too. Yeah, I know some people just aren't comfortable giving out like a personal email. Um, oh yeah, no, no, I mean like the commissioners. Um, I've had some people say like, oh, it's just my personal email. I don't really kind of want that. Give That's it out. We have for emails. <laughs> no, but yeah. So that when you when you deliver it, you can decide if you want to you know email the commissioner or um, whatever way you're able to share a good resolution file make sure that you just check the website that you're using to, or the way, the method, I guess, you're delivering the commissions. Because you want to give them a full res file. You want to make sure that if they ask for a high quality pick, you give them a high quality pick. Like, it's like trying to watch a 480 YouTube video when it's supposed to be in 1080. <laughs> but, because you sent it through Telegram. But yeah. <laughs> But those are kind of the basics of working with commissioners and becoming, you know, starting up as a reputable artist. This but item was brought to you by one artist and two people who don't know anything about art. <laughs> Why didn't we have a silent suitor come up here, though? <laughs> He's talking. He's just not making the mic work. No, Falco, say right. things. You <laughs> literally just talked. I heard you before. You're anyway, literally just being a stubborn bird. So we have 10 minutes. Did anybody have any specific questions? I was just saying, make sure you post on LinkedIn. What? what? He says make sure you post on LinkedIn. Me? I don't know. In general? I mean, if you, if, you have, if you actually have an LLC, like, yeah, post on LinkedIn if you want people. <laughs> Random businessmen will commission pictures of their personas. Literally go for the craziest audiences. There's always someone. Oh, yeah. I, I've seen weirder stuff in my life. <laughs> Alright, so we have one more question. Yeah. Um, I just wanted to make sure that I was answering your question about the 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 as a president. Or were they? Bill Clinton was at FWA this year. He was at a different convention that was attached to FWA, no. but he was at FWA. <laughs> <laughs> picture of Bernie Sanders like in the background with strobes there. Bernie Sanders. That would be funny. There's probably a cardboard cutout. Like the amount of cardboard no, cutouts for I think it was someone cosplaying as uh, All I remember is Pepsi Man. Going back to the username thing, I just thought of this because I'm thinking, pick pick an easy to remember username if you're gonna be an artist. Don't have a lot of numbers in your name. Or a content creator. If you're doing any form of content creation, a number on your name is usually a big no-no. I thought you said consecration and I'm like. Hi, I'm concentrated prune juice. Yeah. Um, also, don't choose like a really common name like Shadow the Fox or something. Joey's original name is Shadow. Yeah. I was like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yes. Or um, taking, <laughs> taking it, It's technically his name, but everyone calls Chewy. <laughs> 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 Alright, so we have one more question. Yeah. Um, I'm curious about the Facebook group. Yeah. Like, do you think that you can use that as a way to like kind of like build your own community or like build your own community? Yeah. 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 There's like three furries I know named Chewy, and most of them don't live near us. And I'm the only one of them that does YouTube. And so I guess the last thing would be, if you do um, want to do art more full time, and a good way to get your name out there is, I'm sure you've seen in the dealer's den, business cards. Those are great yes. for, um, especially if you do want to be a con artist. 
Because you see all those stars. random things around. You see all those nice little tables that have random papers on them. You know what you do? You grab like 15 business cards and just go, wham. And guess what? Now people, when they're sitting there, will just kind of look, oh, that art's cute. And then they look up your Twitter, and then they follow you, and so, then they seal your art, and then maybe, just maybe, they'll give you $10. $10? No. $10. No, um, but especially at larger conventions, at Midwest Fur Fest, that is a big thing where people will drop their business cards onto tables, railings, Vista the floor. Vista Prince will give you, like, what, 500 I don't have business cards. You, Vistaprint has like promotions where you can get so many business cards for like ten dollars. But if you want to really get your name out there and you feel like you are at that level that you would want a business card or that you would be ready to um, take the business a business card would provide. I guess that's how you would say it. Yeah, I mean it, it, it advertises your wares to people who wouldn't know you exist. Yeah. So but that is another great way. If, but that's if you really want to either be a con artist or um, somebody who does it more than just like a side hobby. But that would be a, a good thing. And then make your business cards bright and colorful and nice. Put examples of your art on them. Put examples of your art as many places as you can. Full stop. Like that's the your best advice. Your should be a custom banner made by you. Your icon should be an icon made by you. All of your business cards should be art made by you. Literally, throw that art wherever you can. Really Make some stickers. Literally, stickers. <laughs> People love stickers. It seems like it should be an obvious thing, but I just wanted to get um, jobs in or Yes. I, I literally had someone put on a resume that their email address was I like to F and S U C K six nine at Yahoo.com. You see, and that's why I just made my email that's my first and last name. Resume. That's the most professional you can get. <laughs> did not understand why I was saying don't look at it. No thank you. Yeah. Oh that oh that is really it's really unsettling actually. That's a, that's a cringe. That hurts. I thought like, because my email is my full name backwards. Oh, that's but, actually kind of cool though. It, but it's really complicated. Oh yeah. So, so does it look like I signed it? Oh, I did really like this guy, but oh, his email address. Right. <laughs> that's a date killer. <laughs> yeah. Totally. What's, what's, what's your what's your email? Oh, he was. I didn't think the date was going well until he told me that email address. But when he did, oh! <laughs> oh my God. When people put out there and their screen names and things, I'm thinking more of like younger. Mm -hmm. And now we're on the next member panel: erotic fan fiction for email addresses. So if you do yourself a favor, make yourself a business email, yes. which. Either make it, preferably make it your username at, you know, Gmail, at Yahoo. I, I work for Solaris, and you can get domains. We do domains. Yeah, but all of my furry ones are based oh, off the uh, Whispers great. LLC due to the fact that Wolf Tech hosts it and I'm one of the directors. So mine is Chewy at WIFurs. I think. So the domain thing. Yeah. And that reminds me, the free domain. Again, this goes off of the business cards. Yes. That if you want to take your art to to the next level, um, there are free websites like Weebly where you can make your own free website. And if you and if you plug them in correctly with your Google account, you can have a nice little app on here that shows the traffic to your website. What? Google oh, Analytics. I thought I thought it was something bad. It's were, really nice. We use it for our podcast. Yeah. If you were to go through somewhere like I mean, I would can use the words for yeah. because I work there. Or like what what hosting and, and mm -hmm. domain services, you could be outside of their service area. You don't have to be the fatal service points a lot. They obviously don't service the Dell very much. Mm -hmm. You could be outside and have just that, and then it's fairly accessible to do. Yeah. So yeah, that's a that's a great takeaway. Not if you want to, I didn't get paid. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah, I, 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 no, I, I get want, you. I watch and help businesses. Yeah. So. Yeah. yeah. That's no. That's great. Because if you really do want to take your art to the next level and you know step up that professionalism, 
you can make yourself a website. There are a ton of cheap, easy, free, like I was able to use Weebly, and that's for somebody who's really technologically handicapped like me, that is saying something. Um, so that is one other thing where, if you make business cards, go ahead and make a website. Yes? Also, follow what people are buying, like if people are obsessed with pins, then mm -hmm. pins, people hate pins, don't make pins. Yeah. Pay attention to trends. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so like, I know, yeah, pins are really a big thing right now, like enamel pins. Um, though, but those are, don't laugh at me. Don't call me names. Don't get your pleasure from my pains. <laughs> Sorry. But, yeah, that's, you're right though, follow trends. Where I've seen, um, granted I've only been in the fandom for about three years, I think it's gonna be this year. But I've seen different, uh, like, certain style of your character here's come and go. Um, there was just, but like trends like that, yeah. I mean, I'll be honest, if you want to get popular real fast, this is a horrible idea, horrible to say, but not safe for work, your character here is the fastest way to get an audience. And if, if you're 18 plus. If you're over 18. 18 plus. And you know how to draw that type of stuff, that is the fastest way to gain an audience. Yeah. You may sure. have to stick to doing that for the rest of your career, no. but oh, oh, oh. it'll but get if, you an audience. If you're comfortable with it, <laughs> It's like, uh, really yeah, like, like a, 18 plus stuff. Furries really like 18 plus art and will pay top dollar for a good quality piece. Mm -hmm. So if if you are comfortable with that, because I know some people aren't, do it. This is my first convention where I bought my, brought my son here to my, his first convention and I had to wrap up, you know, you don't really get anything other than the ticket, so I wrote out a check, like this check is good for your admission, and another check, this is good for your mom not making furry jokes against your time, and I called to it so far, it's really hard, 10 points, really hard. And then this is going to have to be the last question. Yeah, I'm going to have to run after this anyway, but um, my, I, I've done a few of your character here kinds of pieces, mm -hmm. and um, I've done both safe for work and NSFW ones, and my top one so far is a safe for work. Really? That's yes. impressive. That's actually genuinely I'm actually, impressed. I'm actually I kinda wanna see that one to see what pose you chose that got a safer work one way more popular than an yeah, safer work one. Because <laughs> usually it's like I can show it to you after the panel. Yeah, I actually kinda wanna see yeah, that. Yeah, I'm one. impressed. Yes. So thank you all for listening to my ramblings. I know that this was a haphazard impromptu event. Yeah, haphazard and prompt you think, but hopefully you guys took away some tips. Look okay, at this way, this is my third panel that I wasn't officially a part of, that I've just joined in and started like, like doing I said, I was, stuff. I was so. downstairs ready to play Mario Kart and then little time's like, they didn't show up and I'm like, well. You're the only artist in this group of like, <laughs> rascals. No, this is super helpful. So, I don't do any art, so to build a whole my song. All of my experiences from YouTube, so it, that's that's it probably works a little different. Like the nice age you're and if you guys have absolutely any questions all after this, um, like I said, you can reach me at Bryn the Fawn, B R I N N the Fawn. That's not the right badge. This is the right badge. You can ask me questions. I'm always on F A N Telegram. I'm always, you know, willing to talk to people, help people out. If you have absolutely any questions, go for it, please. I need friends. I'm Chewy's cousin <laughs> on Twitter. I mean. While I don't have all the advice for art, I can definitely give you advice on how to network because mm -hmm. I've had to work that the, the networking field to the bone to try to get anywhere because starting out is very hard for everybody. You gotta be a real like work to figure out the algorithms. What was your Twitter account? Uh, Chewy's Cuz. So Chew Chew I E S and then. I, uh, yeah, I, yeah, and that C, U, Z. Don't look at me, it's your domain. I know, this is the one that Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, I, Falco, is there anything you'd like to say? Nope. Okay. This is the one you might know this, from the Twitter bird. Yeah, this is the Twitter bird that bought 75 tickets <laughs> for another bird. This would be his third bird if he wins this. Which, I'm just going to do a plug because there's nobody for the next panel yet. 
Please check out the raffle. I know you've been hearing this all day, but for five dollars you could win a fursuit. But I also I am actually commissioning Bryn from this maker from yeah. Truffles. Truffles makes very high quality work. Yeah. You are no matter how many tickets you buy, you're getting the quality out of it because and I they're a very cool person. They make great work. Especially if you spent two hundred dollars on tickets like Falco did. <laughs> But just as a plug for that, please check out the raffle table. And if you don't want to just buy raffle tickets, you can donate during the dance count, which I will be participating in. Each dancer will have people going around collecting tip money during their performances, and the person who raises the most money during their dance wins a trophy for the charity choice for the convention. So make sure you pick your favorite dancer and give, toss them a couple dollars. Because every little bit counts for these cute birds. Not this one, though. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, just as a, a plug, I know they also put a list of, if you can't donate money, I know they just put a list of things that you yeah, can actually items. donate to the, like, you know, like bird toys, bird seed. Um, nuts in the shell, like, if you can't donate money, go to a festival or Walmart or something, just buy a, buy a bag of nuts in the shell. <laughs> Donated. <laughs> Where's my like, oh, microphone? But yeah, so <laughs> I don't believe you guys can have anywhere else to be. Yeah, we literally, you guys can go do whatever. Yeah, I don't think there's over. anything happening. There's no, kind of horror there's, stories, there's, isn't there? There's I don't pin know. No. Seven. There's pin trading here at 7. Oh, yeah, pin, when pin, pin trading's gonna start in here. Yeah, so, so the dinner begins at 6. Who likes pins? Oh, the dinner begins at 6? Yeah. Who wants to trade pins? Ooh, Ooh let me see it. Yes. Oh, I saw that one. I remember hearing about how expensive that one got. You're the artist for that one. I remember yeah. seeing it on Twitter about how like expensive that piece Show was. Show the class. Not, not like crazy expensive. Yeah, but for like a safe of our piece, people were really impressed with how large the like it cost it was. It was like top one. How much was it again? It was like what? Thank like you guys again so much for listening to this oh. family. I appreciate it. Yeah, that 300. I remember it hearing it was like absurdly high for like a safe for a picture standard. I was, um... I've been talking to you know, both at Safe Work and Silver Gato Man, he bought me a coffee. Silver Gato Man, here is the song for thee. He likes to video all the panels at the cons. You should go and watch them, whether they are short or long. Silver Gato Man, you video that's not a jibe. All of you go to his YouTube channel and like and subscribe.